Hey everybody, welcome to part two of a sequence that we're working under the concept of the feet connecting to the core and kind of giving it some good signals uh, to help out with some balance in addition to like some good strength. Um, definitely do and check out part one before you do this one because we're pretty much going to jump in right where we left off. As the whole thing is kind of an hour class, it's just, I guess it'll be weird because the outfit changed. <laughs> Anyway, um, you might want two blocks just for the end as a way to rest, but for the most part, all we really need is a mat, and know that this is maybe going to get a little bit advanced, as when we especially get into the balance part, I'm going to ask you to do some things that are kind of challenging. So remember, like, at home, please, like, scale it, you know, you don't have to do everything, and I'll do my best to suggest, but hopefully, if you've gone with part one and now you're here with part two, you're able to connect to your core in a better and more efficient way. And I can get you to go a little bit into something more advanced that I maybe you've been having problems with or maybe you're just gonna find a new sense of ease there. Let's get started. So, we left off kind of in tabletop going into downward dog and like moving and pedaling it out. Well, let's go back to tabletop and let's explore an advanced option. So, tabletop pose, Go ahead, if you need to, like cat cow, do whatever you like. Then, we go right into Crouching Tiger. So, starting with round one again, if you need to point the fingers outward a little bit or widen the hands, go for it. Tuck your toes, hover your knees, and hold. Now, spinal stiffness, really drive each fingertip, turn it white as they press into the floor. Stay strong, and if you have the ability, Try to bring your hips in line with your shoulders, and then imagine headbutting to create good neck movement. Without losing your left knee, bend your right knee, lift the right foot, and hover and hold. And lower the right foot, bend the left knee, hover and hold, right knee, and the rest of the body stay still. Lower both feet, hold for one more breath. And exhale, knees down. Quick break, come up for air, shake it out, or child's pose, although child's pose is not really a great resting pose, is it? <laughs> Jokes aside, let's take this a step further. So if you were able to float a leg, well one, if it was difficult floating a leg, just being and breathing in Crouching Tiger is a great pose for core and breathing. The other thing would be our first option of just kickstanding, great way to start incorporating some of the next step. The next step gets a little bit more challenging. We're going into Eagle Tiger and then Reverse Eagle Tiger. So, take a big breath in. Pack that air down, push through your fingers, hover your knees. Now hold for a moment, get your form. Fingers engaged, toes engaged, belly is strong, breath is strong. Oh boy, here we go. First, kick stand the right foot. Bring your knee towards your chest. Try to cross the leg around the left leg like you're an eagle, avoiding moving. <laughs> then uncross, bring it all the way back. Tap your knee behind your knee, kind of like a reverse eagle. And reach the leg back, plant the right foot. Whew, left side. Kick stand the left foot. Left knee to the elbow and the chest. Cross the leg around your thigh, try not to move your spine. Undo the eagle leg, bring it back behind you. Tap your left knee behind your right knee. Bring it back to center, plant it down, and hold. This time, take a break. I'm gonna go child's pose for a moment. Maybe a little bit of ballistic movement just to kind of keep the body active. We'll meet in, or we'll meet in downward dog. So toes tuck. Hips up, pedal it out. Ah. Now we really are only going to have one downward dog today. So let's make it feel and kind of go really nicely. Especially if you're doing two parts in a row. Take a moment just to get your legs feeling good. Spread the fingers, press them into the ground, lift your tailbone up. Relax your head. Just hold one breath in. And out. Step your feet to your hands for ragdoll forward fold. Bend your knees, grab your elbows, and just kind of dangle there for a moment. 
Try to relax through the head and then get creative. So if you want to move side to side, if you just want to be there, go for it. And you'll release the hands. Whatever's comfortable for you, roll, climb, or just simply stand up. Check it out a little bit up here too. Especially after all that floor work, I always think it feels really good to stand up. I'm going to twist to face you for the next part. This might be a little hard to see on camera, but we're going to try and work the toes now. It's kind of the final component to getting all this to work better with this. So, hands go wherever they want. Feet to about hip width distance, and I like to turn my toes just a little bit out so they're pretty good and neutral. Now, this is going to be a little bit hard for your brain. <laughs> Look down at your toes. Lift your big toe up. Push the other four small toes down. <laughs> sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, right? Relax. We'll do that a few more times. So big toe up, small toes down. Sometimes you got to do this one foot at a time. That's how I learned it. Relax. Both big toes up, small toes down. And relax. Let's reverse that. Big toe down, small toes up. Oh, but watch out. Sometimes we cave the ankle in to create that. Keep the pinky toe knuckle on the floor. Relax. Again, big down, small up. Oh, come on, left foot. <laughs> Relax. Last one, big toe down, small toes up. Pinky toe knuckle on the floor. Whew, relax. Last part, lift all of your toes up. Try to spread your toes. So bring the pinky toe out to the side. Piano key, one toe at a time to the floor. So pinky toe to big toe, lower down. Whew. Two more times. All up. Spread the toes. Pinky to big toe, piano key. This one I have to do one at a time. I do not have the coordination for both. <laughs> All up. Spread. And pinky toe to big. Whew. Walk out your feet. And I hope that that feels a little bit different. We rarely ever look at our toes and even our ankles. And now we've got a lot of feedback coming from the ground going up into here. Mm -hmm. You can keep your feet to hip width distance. That's my personal preference. But if you're going, oh my God, I gotta bring my toes together, that's okay too. But anyway, feet to hip width distance if you're with me, hands to heart center. Close your eyes for a moment. First, just breathe, kind of bringing everything back into the abdomen. Maybe noticing if your chest has joined in, bringing it back down. Then notice how your feet are connecting to the floor and where your chest, especially your sternum, kind of sits above them. Tuck that awareness in the back of your mind for this next part as we flow. Just a really simple flow. First, a breath in. And a breath out. Inhale, mount it. Reach your hands up to the ceiling. Press your toes a little more into the floor. See if your armpits can grow higher by activating your feet. Exhale, side bend to your left side. So bring your left side arm down. Reach your right arm up. Push through the right foot. See if the right armpit gets a little taller. It's kind of weird, right? Inhale, reach back up. Exhale, side bend to the right. Right arm down, left armpit to the ceiling. Push through your left foot. See if the left armpit can grow. Inhale, mountain. Scrunch the ground with your toes. Exhale, back bend, cactus arms. Inhale, mountain. Exhale, chair, bend your knees. Bring your hands back to heart center. Now since we did chair pose, or uh, boat pose in part one. Think of this as boat, but now standing. So we want a good degree of core, without going to twist to the side, without flaring the ribs open and kind of sticking the butt back. So tuck, stay firm and strong through your belly. Take your weight back into your heels, stay low into your legs, so we're feeling good activation into the thighs. Now for the first round, we're just going to hold, and we're now going to strengthen our toes after having just mobilized them. Look down if you need to. Begin to rock forward and lift your heels for a lightning bolt. 
From the side, it looks like this. Keep the heels lifted. Try to find the barrier where you're pretty sturdy, but right on the cusp of it like an earthquake is shaking the room, right? <laughs> Stay strong and focused. One more breath in. Exhale, plant your heels. Inhale, mountain, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees, please, as you fold. Inhale, lift up halfway. Bring your hands to your shins, your knees, your thighs. Tabletop like spine. Exhale, squat and curl. Come down into a little ball. Obviously, if this isn't available, you can skip this, stay standing or in halfway lift. But otherwise, we curl into a ball. Maybe option one is hands by your sides. Two is reaching forward. Three is giving yourself a hug. We're not really going to work too much on arms in this class. But if you do want to do like a crow or frog or some inversion, feel free to do it right now. Otherwise, three more breaths, just kind of chilling and breathing behind the ribcage. movement. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, forward fold. Use your toes. Inhale, mountain. Exhale, side bend to your left. Push through the right foot. Inhale, mountain. Exhale, side bend to your right. Use your left foot. Inhale, mountain. Exhale, squeeze the floor, back bend. Inhale, tall. Exhale, chair bend and squat back down. Now, set up the core, set up the legs, get your weight into your heels, all the good stuff. If you did, you can lift your toes, just remember to push them back down, please. Now, adding in arms, you can airplane the arms back behind you, lifting through the pinky finger, and that's going to be for the back side of the triceps. You could also go into a classic chair by reaching the arms up by your ears. That's usually more chest and more kind of like top and front of the shoulder. So stay firm with your option. The only thing about to change is your ankle. Inhale, rock forward, lift your heels, lightning bolt. Now again, from the belly, we find strength through the legs. Push through the big toe to stay firm. Continue to breathe in case you forgot. Exhale, heels come down slow. Inhale, mountain. Whew. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, squat and curl. Again, inversions are just a breath break. Three breaths. Last round, inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold back down. Inhale, tall mountain pose. Exhale, side bend. Inhale, mountain. Exhale, side bend. Inhale, mountain. Exhale, big back bend. Inhale, mountain. Exhale, right back into chair. So squat it back, get your form now. Add in your arms. Maybe it's the opposite option of what you just did. Maybe you're totally content with heart center or sassy chair with the hands on the hips. Wherever you end up, same goal. Begin to rock forward, lift your heels. Maybe you can explore a little bit more height now. The higher your heels go, sometimes the lower your butt can go, by the way. But continue that belly strength. Avoid flaring the ribs. Lower your heels down to the ground. Inhale, mountain. Whew, exhale, heart center. Relax your arms, shake it out. 
you do need some water, great time to grab some water because we're going to go into a reflexive flow, meaning we're going to go kind of quickly under the gist that we're using our core to adapt and then reflexively move because that's really how it works in real life is we don't ever think about, oh my God, I need to be stiff as a board when I pick this up or, oh my God, I need to be really flexible to reach for this thing. It just happens. So reflexive core is ultimately one of the best forms of strength for your core. So now we get to do a little bit of yoga to demonstrate that. You'll want to come to the back of your mat. And for these, I'm going to face away from you just so that you know. So you'll come to the back of your mat, and this time feet together. We'll start simple, hands on the hips, or hands to heart center, your choice. Inhale, one-legged mountain, lift your right knee to the ceiling. Pause there so that you can focus on something in front of you. Then push more through your left foot. See if your right knee will grow a little bit taller. It's kind of cool how that works. That's, the, that's our basis of concept too. Now, exhale, eagle pose. So eagle legs, we squat the legs down, crossing the thighs over. Stay tall in your chest, and if you want to plant your foot for like a tripod, please do, or you can kickstand and lift the foot up if you want. Inhale, back to mountain, lift your right knee tall. This part's tough. Exhale, reverse eagle. Bring your right knee behind you. Bend your left knee. Tap your knee behind your knee. Now your knee, if you look down, it's over your toes, isn't it? Yeah, that's allowed, by the way. Not unless it hurts. So anyway, stay strong. Whoo, left ankle's on fire, I hope. Inhale, right knee tall. Exhale, extend your foot and step forward into airplane lunge. Arms back into airplane two. So when you land, land with your belly over your front leg. Create a bend in your knees. If you need to adjust, adjust. Now we bounce up. Inhale, warrior three. Lift the back leg up. Woo. Lift the chest up too. Lift the arms up. Think of the puppet master lifting your chest, feet, and hands to the ceiling. Exhale, plant your left foot back down. We go in reverse. Pause. This is going to be the hardest part. We're going to press through the front leg to lift into one legged mountain. So get ready. This is where all that core comes back in. I like to do like bouncing. So both knees kind of bounce, bounce. Three, two, one kick up Woo. and mount. <laughs> Lower your right foot. The first round, by the way, it's not supposed to be pretty. We got two more to try it though. Switching sides. <clears throat> Inhale, left knee to the ceiling, Ekapada Tadasana. Lift to the chest, push to the right foot, see if your knee grows taller. Be and breathe. Focus too. Exhale, eagle legs, cross the left over the right, tap the toes on the floor, or kick stand up, your choice. Breathe, stay strong right through the tummy. Inhale, left knee to the seat. Exhale, reverse eagle, bring your knee behind you. Bend the right knee, bring your left knee behind you. Now stay upright, it's still kind of like that chair pose in the upper part of the body. But it's the knees that are really getting it, huh? Whew. Inhale, left knee tall. Exhale, extend the foot. Lean back and land. Low airplane lunge. Arms by your sides, pinky fingers up. You're ready to bounce. Inhale, press through the left foot, warrior three. Hands, chest, and foot lift up. Exhale in reverse, lower the foot. Put a bend in both knees, you know what's about to happen. If you need to bounce, bounce, or three, two, one, kick up. One way to mountain. <laughs> Feet together. First round, breath to movement. Whew. Inhale, lift the right knee. Exhale, eagle leg, squat down. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, reverse eagle, knee behind you, tap it back. Inhale, right knee high. Exhale.
exhale, extend and step. Airplane lunge. Inhale, warrior three. Exhale, reverse back. Inhale, lift the right knee. <laughs> Exhale, plant your foot. Whew. Inhale, left knee tall. Exhale, eagle legs. Inhale, left knee up. Exhale, reverse eagle behind you. Tap the knee. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, step forward, land, low lunge. Inhale, lift up, warrior three. Exhale, back down. Inhale, kick up. Whew. Exhale, feet together. Reaction, good job. So, whew, I just good job myself, didn't I? <laughs> Hopefully you did too. Let's go final round. We're going to have a little bit more holding and maybe some advanced options. Inhale, right knee to the ceiling. Pause. Maybe your hands. Now reach to the ceiling. Sometimes I like to do this with a back bind. Both totally great options. Today, let's go this way this side. So, arms stay high for me. Breath in. Exhale, eagle legs, cross it over, try and get a little bit lower. Arms may stay tall. If you ever need to, you can reset them, okay? Anyway, challenge mode, arms stay tall. Inhale, right knee tall. Exhale, reverse. Whew. It's okay to be humble if you're going to take those arms down. Firm with the breath. Inhale, right knee. Exhale, extend and plant. Pause for a moment, get ready to fly. Inhale, left knee or left foot up. Warrior three, hold. Now this is a great place to stay, but if you like to do something traditional, you can reach the arms a little more forward. I like to work on bending the knee, kind of creating that chair pose again. So that now I'm working on a lot more thigh strength and sturdiness. Whew, it's hard to talk and do that. Lower the left foot. Best one yet, right? Balance. Three, two, one. Kick up. Whoa, arms go high if you can. And now. <laughs> I almost need to catch my breath. That's hard to talk and do. Let's do that one more time. Left leg. Inhale, left knee to the ceiling. Option again. So as you hold, add in your arms up, add them back, or keep them right at heart center. This time we'll go back on. Exhale, eagle leg. The beauty is that your chest stays still pretty much in all of these poses. So any old options with legs and arms works because we're getting good core signaling. Inhale, left knee up. Exhale, reverse eagle. Tap it behind, find a nice low spot. Really challenge the ankle right now. Inhale, lift it up again. Exhale, extend and step. Inhale, float up to warrior three. If you need to pause, you can always pause. But now do some warrior three things. Now, maybe again, you bend the left knee a little more. Find the length, headbutt the front, lift the heel and lengthen the leg back. Lower your right foot. Three, two, one, lift. Maybe the arms go into the mountain. <laughs> and plant. Oh, my goodness. Reflexive core. It's no joke, but that's the way to make it stronger off the mat just as much as on the mat. All right, I'm ready to lay down. I don't know about you. Let's take our feet wide, and you can stay kind of straddle the mat. Inhale, hands to the ceiling. Exhale, fold, put a little bit in your knees. Now we'll chill here for a moment. 
that you can kind of ragdoll it out. I personally would like to lock my hands over my leg. I'm gonna do that. Here I can kind of put a bend in my knee. I can get the inside and the outside of my thigh. And they certainly did work hard today, didn't they? And we'll deviate over. Make sure you get both sides. So again, kind of twisting to the side, but working with my legs so that I'm not stressing or overstretching something. Always bend your knees. Good protocol. Then walk back to center. And you know what? We'll meet in a seat. Ah, plop your bow down when you're ready. Kind of signaling us into a more kind of passive and relaxing world will be just a butterfly forward fold. So feet together, knees wide. And here I challenge you to kind of play with the distance. A lot of us, I think, default to heel to groin. That's cool, but sometimes feet far away works a different adductor muscle or maybe something different. So find kind of your own just right spot. Then hands on the ankles. Inhale, let me twist to the side. Inhale, chest to the ceiling, pull the shoulders back. Exhale, hinge, bring your sternum over your feet. Pause there. This is a pretty big stretch as we bow the tissue and stay a little more active. Hold long, one more breath in. And exhale, we can fold for a few breaths. So paw, paw the hands forward. Bend the neck, rotate down. You may your elbows slump. Maybe you can do anything that feels good. If you can get pretty low like me, if you take breaths through your nose, you might want to be careful, your feet might get stinky. <laughs> that's a, a really bad joke, and that's one of my favorite ones to make in this pose. And come on up to a seat. Let's go ahead and lay down. You'll probably, if you do have blocks, make sure that they're next to you so they're easy to grab. And we'll lay down. So bring your back all the way to the floor. And right away, let's go knees into the chest. With your knees and your chest, just lightly and casually rock side to side. Just kind of get in your back, the sides of your hips. You can even take your knees a little bit wider, kind of like a, a pre-happy baby pose, if you will. And that will get a little more on that outer portion of your hip, too. And if you like to take happy baby, just lift the feet up. I personally like to do happy baby by grabbing my knees. Some people go ankles, some people go feet. Really, it's your choice. Whatever feels good. Actually, no ankles feel good right now. Now I'll just go side to side. Again, a nice stretch to the inner thigh. We also get to kind of massage some of the outer thigh. Let's go knees back in. Grab one of your blocks. Put it between your legs. Lower both knees to your right side. Reach your left arm out to the side, easy twist. And look over your left shoulder if that's comfortable. You can rest your right hand on your tummy, kind of re-signaling the air to go there. Or the right arm can be up to a T, by the way. But about four to five breaths. We want to inhale for the count of two. Exhale for the count of six. Long exhale. Again, in for two, out for six. Lift your knees back through center. Transition them to your left side. So both knees drop comfortably, stack, scooch, get everything feeling nice. Reach your right arm out to the side. Hand to belly or hand to a T, your choice. This time, maybe close your eyes. Inhale for two. Exhale for six. And 
take your knees back to center. Supported Supta Vanakanasana or supported butterfly. So keep your back there. Bring your feet together, your knees wide, and put your blocks under your legs. This is just going to help. We want to do it in a way that feels good. And so this medium size tends to work, but we can also go long ways. And then really, you've got to kind of like finagle it into the floor so that things are supported. <laughs> this floor might be a little too slippery for me. But what also works is putting it really close in, so at least like that, that like pelvic attachment to the thigh has a little bit of support. And so that would kind of look like this, especially if your knees aren't quite as low to the floor as mine are. So really, kind of find and finagle your way to some level of support. And then, into the meditation, take one hand on the belly and one hand to your chest. Begin to focus on your breath, really homing in on all the air moving through the belly air. Inhale, your belly rises and expands. Exhale, your belly kind of falls down to the ground with ease. You want minimal movement in the chest hand, that's what it's there for. And if you do feel some movement, just another reminder that every breath is a con can be a conscious effort. And you can try each time just to bring that into the belly a little better. And back to the rhythm of the breath, the two count inhale and the six count exhale. Stay here. I'm going to move into a seat so I can talk to you. Perhaps the most yogic of all is the connection the core has for all parts of the body and the unity that it brings. So arms and legs, upper and lower, all working together. Now at this time, I encourage you to either stay as you are for another few moments, maybe minutes, Maybe you'd like to now move into Shavasana, or maybe you'd now like to add in any other thing. The way I like to end my class is you find the position that's most comfortable for you in this moment. So support a bridge, legs at the wall, Shavasana, like get comfortable. And let go. Coming back to that connection that the core has with breathing. But now that longer rhythm two second or two count inhale and the six second or six count exhale kind of starting that recovery starting that ease and the usual eliminating any thoughts that kind of drift in your 